In the name of God the most merciful, the most compassionate. Welcome back dear students. In this session, we will dealt with dynamic analysis of mechanisms. A dynamic problem will be analyzed after simplifying it to static problem. For this purpose we have DA Lambert principle. This will be explained in this session. In dynamic analysis, the effect of forces on a mechanism when it is in motion is considered. The inertia forces and their effects on the mechanisms will be studied in detail here. Analyzing a static system will be comparatively easier than a dynamic system. The de Lambert's principle helps us to convert a dynamic system into a static system under equilibrium. According to D. A. Lambert's principle, inertia forces and couples together with the external forces and couples will bring the system to equilibrium. That is summation of forces, F equals F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus so on plus Fi equals 0. Similarly, summation of couples, C equals C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus so on plus Ci equals 0. If the external forces F equals mass into acceleration, M into A, then the inertia force will be Fi equals minus M into A, where M is the mass and O is the acceleration. Similarly, if external couples, C equals I into alpha, then the inertia couple will be C I equals minus I and alpha. D. A. Lambert's principle may reduce a dynamic system into an equivalent static system and the techniques in static force analysis can be applied to study the dynamic system. Now we will see, how to find the inertia forces and couples of a four bar mechanism when the mechanism is given an input angular velocity of omega, at linker be the driver. Since the inertia force as per d a lambert is minus of mass into acceleration, we must find the acceleration of centers g of each link by constructing the the acceleration vector diagram as shown below. For the mechanism O, A, B, C, G2, G3 and G4 are the centers of links 2, 3 and 4. Fix their position in the acceleration diagram by ratio, on the resultant acceleration line shown as dashed lines. That is, vector A G2 by vector AB equals length A G2 on link AB by length of link AB. Similarly find the position of G3 and G4 also considering ratio of respective vectors and lengths of points in the respective links. Join point O with G2, G3 and G4 in the acceleration diagram, to get their absolute acceleration which is shown as red arrows. Therefore, inertia forces of the links too, 3 and 4 are given as F2 equals minus M2 into AG2, F3 equals minus M3 into AG3 and F4 equals minus of M4 into AG4. The negative sign indicates that the inertia force acts in the opposite direction of acceleration vector. After finding the magnitudes of inertia forces of the links in the mechanism, we need to find their positions on the links also. Direction of inertia forces are opposite to the directions of respective accelerations and may not pass through the G's. Since inertia torque F into H equals I into alpha, where F equals M into O and I equals M into K square. To locate the inertia forces, find h, their distance from g that is, given by h equals k square alpha by acceleration, 
where k is the radius of gyration of the respective link and alpha is its angular acceleration. After finding the inertia forces, together with the constraint forces, we need to get the torque to be applied in the crank to keep the system in equilibrium. The mechanism is to be analyzed using superposition concept considering one inertia force at a time in each link, neglecting the other inertia forces. Steps for finding the solution are similar to static force analysis. Problem 1 is based on the D. A. Lembert's principle, to find the inertia forces. For the four bar mechanism ABCD shown below, AB equals 500 mm, BC equals 660 mm, CD equals 560 mm and AD equals 1000 mm. The angular velocities and acceleration of all the rotating links are given in the table. Determine the inertia forces developed in each moving link and locate them in the link. Assume all the CGs are at the midpoint of the corresponding link. To proceed with the solution of problem 1, First we need to draw the given mechanism to a scale. This is step 0. Step 1 is to construct the acceleration table. The table will contain name of the link, its angular velocity, angular acceleration, and centripetal as well as tangential components of acceleration of the respective links. The magnitude of centripetal component will be omega square into length of the link and will act parallel to the link. Whereas the tangential component will have the magnitude of alpha into length of the link and it will be perpendicular to the position of link. Since the omega and alpha of link AB is completely known, its row is completely filled up. For other links, the unknown alpha will be found from the acceleration diagram. Step 2 starts with drawing the acceleration diagram. Fix the arbitrary point C and D, representing the fixed point of the mechanism. Draw vector EB1, a line parallel to EB towards the lower point A, the fulcrum of link B to a length 50 mm representing 50,000 mm square, as a scale of 1 mm equals 1,000 mm square is used. Draw vector BB1, a line perpendicular to EB downwards as omega turns clockwise, for 10 mm length equivalent to 10,000 square. Vector EB is the final component of acceleration for link AB. Similarly draw vector BC1, representing 10560 mm square, parallel to BC towards the lower point B, fulcrum. Draw vector C1C, perpendicular to BC. Vector BC is the final component of acceleration for link BC. Similarly draw vector DC2, equivalent to 20,160 mm square, parallel to CD towards the lower point D, the fulcrum. Draw vector C2C, perpendicular to CD. The lines perpendicular to BC and CD will meet to give you the point C. Vector DC is the final component of acceleration for link CD. In step 3, we will find the acceleration of mass centers of links. Since the G points are intermediate points of respective links, they can be fixed by considering the final acceleration ratios. For the mechanism ABCD, G2, G3 and G4 are at the midpoints of links 2, 3 and 4. Fix them by ratio. On the resultant acceleration line, shown as dashed lines. That is, 
acceleration at g2 by acceleration ab equals to length of link a g2 in the mechanism divided by length of link a b. Hence the acceleration a g1 can be found and g2 can be fixed on the acceleration diagram. Similarly find g3 and g4 in the acceleration diagram by considering the length and acceleration ratio of the respective links. Join the point A with G2, G3 and G4 in the acceleration diagram, to get their absolute accelerations. By measuring the values of A G2, A G3 and A G4 and converting to the scale adopted, we can get the accelerations of G points. Therefore, inertia forces of the links 2, 3 and 4 are given as F2 equals M2 into AG2 equals 20 into 26,000 equals minus 520 kilograms meter per second square. F3 equals M3 into AG3 equals 40 into 44,000 equals minus 1,760 kilograms meter per second square. And F4 equals M4 into AG4 equals 30 into 38,000 equals minus 1,140 kilograms meter per second square. The negative sign indicates inertia force acts in the opposite direction of acceleration. Finally we need to find the location of inertia forces as shown in step 4. First we have to find the unknown angular accelerations from the tangential components. Alpha 3 is obtained by dividing the distance C1C, the tangential component of BC with link length BC. Similarly Alpha 4 is obtained by dividing C2C with length CD. Then the offset position of inertia, H, is obtained by using the formula K score your into alpha divided by respective absolute acceleration of G's. The directions of inertia forces are parallel to the acceleration vector but in the opposite sense as shown. Same steps are to be adopted for getting the inertia forces in a slider crank mechanism. Ritter has construction. A shortcut method can be used for determining the, the accelerations of connecting link and slider. We will now see how to find the accelerations of engine components by Ritter Hawes construction, a shortcut method. Draw the given reciprocating mechanism OAB. Draw a line from O perpendicular to OB. Extend AB to meet the perpendicular line at M. Draw a line from M parallel to OB. Extend O to meet the parallel line at N. Drop a perpendicular for MN from N to meet AB at point P. Draw a perpendicular to AB from P to meet OB at Q. The polygon OAPQ is the acceleration diagram for the mechanism OAB but in the scale 1 as to omega 2 square. Here omega 2 is the angular velocity of crank OA. For instance, the centripetal acceleration of crank OA is O into omega 2 square. Similarly the centripetal acceleration of link AB is distance AP into omega 2 square and tangential acceleration is PQ into o omega 2 square. In the same way, the acceleration component of slider is distance OQ into o omega 2 square. Students can try problem 2 as an exercise. Ritter has construction can be used to solve this problem and find the inertia forces. With this we have completed module 1 of our course. As a summary, we have started with the fundamentals of static analysis. Identification of constraint forces, concepts of equilibrium, 
inertia forces and significance of D.A. Lambert's principle in the dynamic analysis of mechanisms are the other topics we have covered in this module. We will meet again with module 2 in our next session. Bye. May peace be upon you.